I want to go through door six. That's a problem. None of these teams will be able to go through the doors they want. Clover and I chose door one. Lewis and I chose door two. That's not enough people to open a numbered door, however. The digital routes don't match up either. We've got similar problems. June, Junpei, and I want to go through door six. But our digital route is five. If we're gonna open that door, we need a one. Damn, what are we gonna do now? What are we going to do? Hmm. Hmm. <sighs> Why don't Seven and Lotus go through door one with me? What about me? Isn't that obvious? Wasn't one of the teams just complaining that they didn't have a one? You mean I should join Santa's team? Yes. Huh. I understand. I'll go through door six then. If we do as Clover has suggested, we can all pass through a numbered door and no one will be left behind. This seems to be the most reasonable solution. Seven, Lotus, what do you guys think? I don't have a problem with it. Me either. All right then, we're good. See you later. Wait, Clover, don't move on your own. Oh, I'll be going too then. Yeah, be careful. We should get going as well. Mm. Mm. This is E-Deck. There should be a door at the end of the hall. All right, let's go. There it is. You guys ready? Yeah. Then let's get to it. Hey! I found it! It's right there! Uh... <gasps> <sighs> it stopped. Yes! It stopped! Whew. I don't believe I'll ever get used to that. I'm not sure it's something I'd want to get used to. We should finish this game before imminent death becomes a normal- You got that right. Once I'm out of this hellhole, I'm taking a nice long vacation. <laughs> I agree. All right, let's go. This door looks heavy. But it's not locked. I'm opening it. Whoa, what the hell is this? This has to be the biggest room so far. This huh, could be two stories, maybe even more. This space could be utilizing the entire length of the ship. What's that huge Kamaboko looking building in the middle? Kamaboko? <laughs> well, I guess that's as good of a description of it as any. I see stairs, so we may as well head over to them. Yeah, but this section's barely wide enough to fit one person. You're right. Whoa, you can't even tell the shape when you're this close. Let's check out the other side, too. This looks to be the steam engine room. The steam engine room? Yes, that thing that looks like a cross-section of a mushroom is the boiler. You see the three round doors near the bottom? Coal is put into those and burned, which heats the water, producing steam. The same thing that drives a steam engine. This one is simply somewhat larger. I see. It doesn't appear to be running right now. All right, let's split up. Hey, what's wrong? Are you all right? Hey, June. Jumpy. You, oh, you're, you're really warm. Is your fever coming back? Yes, but I just need to rest. Okay, okay. Uh... Thank you. 
Ace, Santa. Yes. Right. All right. Let's get started. Hang in there, June. I'm gonna get you out of here real soon. I believe the box has reached the floor. Yeah. June's down over by there. She doesn't seem to be improving. Well, of course not. She's not gonna just get better right away, you know? What could be causing this, I wonder? Illness, perhaps? Nah, it's gotta be exhaustion. She gets dropped into some weird-ass ship, forced to play some messed-up game. If you think about it, it's a lot weirder that we aren't freaking out just like her, you know? So you're saying we're abnormal? Yeah. We're just running around this room, solving all these puzzles like it's just business as usual. How the hell could you call that norm? We're just guinea pig. A guinea pig? You mean we're being used for some sort of experiment? Is that what you're saying? Dunno. But it does seem like a possibility. You know, speaking of experiments, there was this experiment some scientists did with rats. First, they took a squarish C-shaped tank and filled it with enough water that the rats could drown in it. The tank has two exits. Just to make it easy, we'll call one A and the other B. Exit A is pitch black, so dark even a rat can't see anything. But exit B is electrified, which means the rat can't leave through it. So, what would a rat do if it was put in this situation? Which exit would the rat choose? B, of course. The rat has no way of knowing that exit B is electrified. Exactly. The rat goes to exit B. Of course, like I said, it's electrified. Which means the rat can't get out that way. So, after a lot of trial and error, the rat finally finds exit A. Hmm. I can't say that's very interesting or relevant. It's You're right. It isn't very interesting. Yet. Hmm? See, 
These scientists repeated this experiment over and over, using hundreds of different rats over several generations. This produced some surprising results. With each generation, the rats took less time to find the correct exit. Eventually, a rat was put in the tank who instantly chose exit A, but that wasn't the most impressive part. The same experiment was conducted in another laboratory, far from the original one, with the same results. No, on second thought, the results weren't really the same. The rats in this second experiment began the trials with significantly faster times than the first rats in the initial one. These rats weren't related to the others and had never even come in contact with them. They all easily found their way to exit A as though- What did it mean? Are you suggesting something like telepathy? They were passing information to one another through some undetectable medium? <laughs> How the hell would I know? I'm not any kind of scientist. I don't know what made him do that. But I do know that story's true. And if you've got another explanation, I'd sure love to hear it. Hmm. Come on, let's get going. There's still a lot here we haven't checked out. And we gotta get the hell out of here before June passes out. Hey, wait. There's something I want to ask you. What? Why did they use that tank for the experiment? Huh? Well, I mean, it seems like you could conduct the same experiment without the water. They could have just used a dry box, you know? If they needed to motivate the rats to escape, they could have... I don't know... Put some bait by exit B or, or something. I mean, do they really have to make it so the rats can drown? You know, the word emergency comes from the same root as the word emerge. You ever think about that? Huh? Well, an emergency is something urgent, and to emerge means to sort of come out, or appear, or rise out of something else. So what's going to emerge in an emergency? Inspiration. Inspiration? Yeah. Think about it. When the chips are down, either you crack or your mind focuses and pulls up what you need. So in an emergency, your real potential emerges. Yeah. That's why the rats had to drown. They had to be in danger. There had to be an emergency for inspiration to emerge. Oh.
Jess, the door's open. All right, Junpei. Why don't you go get June now? Santa and I will keep an eye on this door. Why do we need to do that? Even if it shuts, we know how to solve the puzzle now. Well, I suppose that's true. Shall all three of us go and collect June then? Nah, I'm cool. I'll let Junpei handle it. So are you only interested in being contrary? All right. I'll go get June. I'll be right back. Oh, Jumpy! Are you okay? Yes. I'm fine now. Uh, let me check. <gasps> Good. You're feeling a lot better. Are you sure you're all right? Oh, you're such a warrior, Jumpy. Oops, I mean, <laughs> warrior! <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go. Go where? Oh, right. We got the ex- Great! Oh! Santa? What are you looking at? It's a photo. It's my sister. Sister? Santa, you've got a sister? Yeah. Kid was cute as a button. She was only about an inch tall then? <laughs> <clears throat> oh, sorry. I guess an inch is a little large for a button. Mm. <laughs> sorry. Why are you looking at it? <sighs> I was her Santa Claus. Wait, we didn't have parents. They bought it in an accident when we were still kids. So I had to be like her dad. And that meant that I bought her Christmas presents every year. On Christmas Eve, I'd leave the present next to her pillow. And the next morning, she'd come running into my room with this big smile. Look, look, Santa left me a present. He got me that doll I really wanted. I'm so glad he got my letter. She was always so excited. I was the one who told her to write those letters. I'd say, write down something you want and mail it to Santa. The address I gave her was somewhere in Northern Europe that doesn't exist. And then a few days later, it'd show up back in our mailbox marked Address Unknown. I'd open the letters before she figured out they'd been sent back. Once I had the letter, I'd go around to a couple stores with some money I'd saved up over the year and buy her the stuff she'd asked for. It took a lot of saving, but I managed to buy her presents every year. Huh. Huh. But one year, her letter was different. She didn't write a list of toys she wanted or anything like that. Instead, it said, I don't want any presents this year. Instead, I want you to make my wish come true. My wish is that we'll be happy like this for a really, really long time. That was it. Nothing else. But I couldn't make that wish come true. Some Santa I am. What happened? She died. She was killed. Nine years ago. Oh. <gasps> All right, let's go. Hmm. Huh? Hey, what are you two doing? Let's get moving, come on! Let's go. Yeah. Oh, you're finally back. Sorry we took so long. Let's go. Huh. Is, is this a warehouse? No, I believe this is the cargo room. This must be where they store all of this vessel's freight. There are wooden crates everywhere. I wonder how old they are. Well, we probably ought to start with finding the exit, right? Let's get going!
Now we finally have all, we just need to insert these cards into the slots at the front of each box. You know which card goes in which box, yes? Uh, yeah, of course. You just match our numbers to the numbers, then you pop the corresponding card in the right box. So for instance, the card with the picture of Ace on it goes into box one. The card with the picture of Snake... Oh, uh... Huh? Hey, June, are you okay? I'm sorry, I, I gotta go check on her. You finish the box thing, all right? Uh, um... Just put the cards in the boxes. I'm counting on you. Are you all right? What happened? Can you stand? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm fine. I just tripped. Don't give me that. Now is not the time. But it's true. I, I tripped over a box. Just let me see for a sec. Huh? You're still warm. I saw her fall. I think she really did just trip on something, you know? Still, to fall down like that? I think she's probably still a little messed up. All right, well, let's just get out of here as fast as we can. Well, I don't think it's anything that serious. I just need a little medicine and some sleep, and I'll be fine. Medicine? Well, if we could get in touch with anyone outside, I'll bet Ace could swing that for you easy. Ace? Why? Huh? Don't you know? He's the president of a pharmaceutical company. Cradle Pharmaceuticals is the name, I think. Their flagship product is an anesthetic drug called Soparil. Soparil? I've heard of that before somewhere. Soparil. It's an anesthetic that's a gas at room temperature. A lot like how nitrous oxide is. It takes only a few seconds to spread, and even a small amount is very effective. A bunch of countries quickly accepted it for widespread use within their police and military forces. It was an effective crowd suppressant and room clearer. It was practical, ethical, and the humane nature of it made it the ideal drug. It's been around for about six years. It became popular almost as soon as it was made public. Demand for Soparil skyrocketed. And of course, that meant Cradle Pharmaceutical stock did too. Why do you know all of this? I heard it from the old man himself. From Ace? When? By the number four door at the central stairway, when we were searching the second class room. Remember how Snake, Seven, and you went to door five? It was back then. I asked him what he did for a living, and he said he ran his own company. After that, we just started talking, and I guess it just came up, you know? Huh. Are you worried about something? No, nothing. Uh, what the hell is he doing? June, don't push yourself, all right? Yes. Santa, could you take care of her? I'll go check on Ace. Looks like he's having trouble. Sure. What are you doing? What happened? Nothing, I... My vision has gotten rather blurry, I think, because of fatigue. What can't you see well? These pictures. I don't care to admit it, but I may be developing presbyopia. Growing old is a difficult thing. At any rate, I'll leave the rest to you. I'm feeling awfully tired, so if you don't mind, I'd like to rest for a bit. How could simply looking at cards have tired him out? Hmm. But if it wasn't... What had made him so uncomfortable? Prosopagnosia. Well, put simply, it means a condition where the mind can't distinguish between human faces. In other words, my face would look the same as Clover's or even yours. So they can't remember faces, which is how most people recognize each other. That means that people with prosopagnosia have trouble recognizing even people they're close to. Maybe... maybe he's got prosopagnosia? Huh. Well, he looks depressed enough to have it. Oh well. Time to solve the nine boxes puzzle. Ace's card is in box one. I just need to do the same for the rest. And finally, the ninth man's card into box nine. Yeah! Oh, they opened! What the...? Nine... pins? I guess I'll take him with me.